2100 player. All right. Let's see if we get an interesting game. I can switch now uh, with e4, e5 to an open uh, opening. Um, do we want to do this? Mm, no. So his plan is maybe uh, the Chigurin defense with d5. Oh, he wants to play Abort d6. Requested. Oh, sorry. Maybe he thinks I'm. I, I fell asleep because I didn't move. Um, I don't know this move. I think he wants to play a gambit. Let's play just uh, because I think he knows the opening then very well. Um, let's play a different kind of position. The pawn on e4 might become a weakness. So how does he want? He needs to protect it maybe even with f5 because now. I mean, I can play bishop g5, right? How does he want to keep control here? Maybe this is a weakness later. Oh, let's see. I don't. I don't see the uh, the problem with the bishop g5 at the moment. So I'm well developed. I have a bit more space. Pawn on e7 is a weakness. Maybe he wants to play queen e7. Yeah, but the structure is not very good for him. This is a check now what he's threatening. I can destroy his pawn structure, but I don't want to do it. And I like c3. Just that he can't play queen b4 because this would be good for him. Am I afraid of bishop f5? No. But I think it's time now to put even more pressure here on on this square. So knight d2 attacking e4 again. Bishop f5 maybe. And then I could play g3 and bishop g2. And it's all about this this uh, pawn here on e4. And you can see that it's not that easy for him to develop uh, this bishop. Once he plays g6 I can just take the the knight here. So does he really want to castle long? I might be very quick here. Let's play g3 and put more pressure here. So if he castles rook e8, he can keep he can keep the pawn, that's true. I'm not sure about e3. Okay, let's let's take now the pawn. And now if I play bishop g2, he can play e3, I think. So I want to stop him from doing so. And now I, I thought I played bishop g2, but I don't like this that much anymore. He can play rook e8. I want to attack here. Let's try to weaken somehow. And I want the white squares, like a6, b6, and then maybe I can jump. And I don't want to exchange queens. I mean, that's something he wants to do because his king might come uh, attacked. And so, yeah. I that's his only possibility to play something like h4 to get rid of his bad pieces here on the on the king side, but I want to do this, so oh, I don't want to allow th to allow this. He's threatening maybe to sacrifice something here. I just want to play it really, really safe. Bishop h6 is threatening here as well. Hmm. You know what? Let's. Yeah, I thought about playing knight f1 even to just keep control here, but. I think my, my king is best here on c2. There are no checks coming if you sacrifice something.
maybe I can support g3 with the rook and then I want to attack again because um, the last few moves were just assigned to to uh, stop him from attacking me so um, the knight is good on d4 it's very good on d4 I don't need to take this, I can. He wants to attack here, but I just keep continuing to attack him. So the question is how to proceed here. Is a6 good? I like a6. Yeah, and then his queen is gone. Check. So the position is one now. Black resigns. I think in the in this game there are s some different kind of things uh, one can learn because um, okay, the opening it was a pawn sacrifice, and what I didn't want to do because I don't know this opening, um, that he feels comfortable with the opening. I mean. I think most people would just take here on, on e5, and I think he played a lot of games with sacrificing a pawn with d6, getting his pieces out very quickly. Maybe um, some kind like in the Fariorvitz Gambit or Budapest Gambit. I didn't like this. So I played maybe a rather, uh, not the best move, but um, <coughs> a move um, where I have a solid opening advantage. And, and here, if you look at the position, this pawn is a weakness. So I think um, I, I like the position. I like to have an advantage, and that the opponent doesn't have free piece play. And that's this was something he really wanted to do in the opening. And later on, I mean, here already, also it's uh, how how do you say it? preventive maybe c3. I just don't want him to exchange queens because if he plays queen before, I need to take. He, ca he gets his pieces out very quickly, and I think the queen is very bad here on e7 at the moment so c3 is just to protect me from exchanging queens because I think the queen here on d4 is very strong and his queen is very bad and so um, chess sometimes it's just prevention prevention from your uh, that your opponent has an easier game or better game and there are more ideas like this in the game here um, I mean I could play it all the time so he needed to do something about this knight. He can't free it, so sooner or later he needs to uh, get rid of the bishop here and, and this terrible pin. So this is what's happening now. And e3, okay, I, I could have played um, bishop g2, but uh, I didn't like him to play e3. His bishop gets free, even if I, I mean I win a pawn, but look at this pawn, it's a double pawn then, maybe he can put pressure on the e-file, so I just stopped him from getting uh, some peace play, some free, from some space for his pieces. It's still a problem for this bishop. So his his only plan can be to play something like h5, h4, to get rid of these pieces here, and maybe the bishop uh, to put pressure here on on e3, and that's what he did. But I think it's very very risky that he castles long, because if you look at the at this queenside position, there are no black pieces despite the rook but if you castle the rook is also in the center so um, I think the king is very lonely on this side of the board so I directly attacked I mean often you should develop first but what I didn't like to do is I didn't like to castle short because then the black attack might be very strong here why should I give him this opportunity so it's prevention again I didn't like to castle long, uh, long because I wanted this rook to come into the game and I could keep the king in the center because it's not easy for him to crack the center up. So attacking and um, yeah, ridiculous. I just uh, I mean I could have taken here on a7. I just uh, um, I mean I should have seen this. Yeah, you can just take on a7 and uh, it's a terrible position for for black. So he um, he played. King b8 just to protect a7. 
Okay, but I stick to my plan to open up the, the lines now and um, sooner or later a6 is a, is a threat. If I play a6, c6 becomes a weakness because this pawn is protecting c6. And this was also something that happened really in the game. So he wants to exchange queens. For sure I don't want to do this because I think I have attacking potential. Uh, his uh, attacking potential is much less. So keep the queens on board if you have maybe uh, the possibility to checkmate your opponent. And now he wants to free his pieces. I think mm, if I look at it now, maybe I should even have played something like uh, rook g1 and allow him to exchange here. And Because, uh, I mean, h4 is stopping him from playing h4 himself, but it weakens these pawns here. So I was a bit afraid now that he might sacrifice here uh, pieces like, like bishop h6 sacrificing here and coming with the queen maybe this bishop might get strong maybe he wins even this pawn so three pawns for for the bishop I don't want something like this to happen so I played um, bishop e2 just to to protect my king a bit there um, there is no check or some attacking potential now with bishop g4 later if I ro try to run with away with my king and here as well I just played king d1 because I think now it gets a little bit uh, dangerous here for the king yeah there are potentials to to take with the rook and then taking here as well I I don't need this so I go away with my king to feel safe and it's not easy for black to have a plan I mean he needs to do something on this side of the wing and so sooner or later he needs to sacrifice peace maybe and so my king is much better here on the on the queen side. And what he what he does now is he sees that uh, his king is a bit lonely, so he wants to support his king with the bishop, and he sees he needs to open up some uh, some lines, and this is just possible by pushing forward the pawn. So he plays bishop c8, and I could have taken here on e4 now, but as said, I don't want um, him to get an easier game. I can uh, try to. Uh, to attack here on the on the king side uh, on the queen side where the king is, and there are not many pieces of him, so I can play king c2, bringing over the rook here, bringing over the other rook, and it's difficult for black to break through here, and so this was just a prevention again from any sacrifices, and now, after all these preventive moves to stop black uh, having more fun in the game, so to say. It's time again for me to attack, and attacking means not just grabbing pawns or something like. I'm totally not interested in this pawn. I mean, I could take the pawn, and this would be a very strong pawn in the end game. But I think it doesn't run away. I can try something like this later on anyway. But this knight dreams about becoming the hero of the game. So um, knight d4 is very very strong because the knight controls a whole center. And the, and the squares around and it's threatening uh, knight c6 as well and this so I played this and here again I could take the bishop but, but why should I take the bishop um, if there are some attacking chances for black I then I need to defend again I think in a in a real game like a two hour game or something yeah then you would think a lot and um, and then you would certainly see aha uh -huh, you have defensive resources it doesn't matter if, uh, if black gets uh, one or two pawns here um, you just win the game but in a blitz game, I think uh, I, I didn't need to, to take this uh, this bishop directly. I still threaten here a6, and this is such an easy easy plan. Yeah? What will he do after e a6? He can't play b6 because of this, uh, this fork. So I can open up the a file, and then he gets checkmated, or I can uh, win all these pawns here on the. Uh, yeah, this is a position. So what he can't move the pawn. And if if I take here on on b7, this rook becomes very very dangerous. I can play queen a4 or queen a2, and then win in this pawn afterwards. It's not a problem. So just imagine now, he, I don't know. He plays rook to g2 or something. I take here. He takes back, and then I can play a queen a2 attacking this pawn. If he plays a6, I can even uh, take with uh, with this bishop here. However, I mean, you need to take care. Uh, rook g2 would attack f2 again. Uh, maybe this becomes uncomfortable, but the idea is clear. 
So um, focus on the on the weaknesses in the enemy's camp and uh, make preventive moves that you stop uh, your opponent to get a better game. 